to begin our lesson today, we have a warm-up. And our first problem is to simplify with exponents. Remember, when working with exponents, you have to distribute the exponent outside into everything inside. So we have 2 to negative 3 x, and here we multiply. 0 times negative 3 would be 0. y to the negative 6 times 2 y x cubed. Now we can combine like terms. Remember what these are the first. And now we add our exponents. So we have 2 to the negative 2, x to the 3, and y to the negative 5. Negative exponents go down to the bottom. x cubed over 2 squared times y to the 5. And now we can simplify 2 squared. So our final is x cubed over 4y to the 5th for our answer. Our next problem tells us to solve. And we are multiplying mixed fractions. To work with these, remember, we have to change them into improper fractions first. 4 times 10 is 40, plus 3 is 43 over 10 times uh, 9, 11 over 3. I always like to check to see if anything would simplify, and in this case nothing does, so we can multiply straight across. And we end up with 473 over 30, which cannot simplify nicely. And I'm going to leave it as a mixed fraction. Our final problem is dividing fractions. Once again, our first step is to change them into improper fractions. So we have 18 over 5 divided by 14 over 3. Now we keep switch flip. So 18 over 5 times 3 over 14. Here I like to see if anything simplifies. 8 and 14 both divide by 2. So we can have change them into 9 and 7. And now we are in simplest form, so our fraction will be in simplest form. We can multiply straight across. 9 times 3 is 27 over 5 times 7 of 35. And there we go. The I can statement today is I can calculate simple interest. Calculating simple interest comes in handy, especially when you have loans or bank accounts and stuff like that. So today I wanted to start with seeing how you can come up with something. And so we have two situations here and both situations describe earning simple interest. And I'm curious if you can take those two examples and create a formula that you will always work when calculating simple interest. Our first, situ first situation states that when I've got my first summer job, I opened a savings account with an interest rate of 1.23%. At the end of summer, I had saved a total of $4,567. I let all my money sit untouched in the bank for four years. At the end of the four years, I had earned $224.70 of simple interest on my investment. Our second situation says that to save up money for college, I invested $3,456 into an account that earned 7.89% interest. I let the money sit in the account untouched for three years. At the end of the three years, I had earned a total of $818.04 worth of simple interest. Taking all these numbers, how can we have a formula that calculates simple interest? Give it a try. Now, let's see what's on the next slide. Here we have our formula for simple interest. And our formula is I equals P times R times T. However, before this can make any sense, we first have to define what all of these stand for. And because it's a formula for simple interest, I stands for the simple interest earned.
one. That's a pretty easy one. Now P, P in math, it stands for principal. However, it's not like the principal of the school. The principal is the initial money invested, or money invested. It's the money you're starting with. How much are you starting with is your principal, or your P. Our R stands for rate, which from science you should know that's what R stands for. And our rate is always a percentage. And remember, in story problems, when we formulate these, our percent needs to be entered as a decimal into the equation. We cannot leave it as a percent. And finally, our T stands for time. Pretty obvious. However, time is a special case because it always has to be in years. You cannot leave it in months. You have to convert it to years. Do not forget that. Now that we have our formula of I equals PRT and we know what everything stands for, let's see if we can apply it. And our first problem says that I opened a savings account with a 3% interest rate. I put $500 into the account. How much interest did I earn in five years? And what is the new total on my bank account now? So we're first going to look at the question underlined in blue. How much interest did I earn in five years is our first question. And that is simply following with our interest rate formula. So we need to plug in our PRT to find I. So I equals P is our principal or the money invested, which was $500 times our rate, our interest rate in decimal form, 0 0.03 times the time. How long did it sit? Five years. When we plug this into the calculator, we end up with I equals $75. So we earn $75 in interest in those five years. Now, our next question is asking what is the new total on my bank account? And our new total is going to be our principal that we invested, how much we started with, plus the interest that we've earned so far. So 500 plus 75 gives us a grand total of $575 in the bank account. And there we go. Our second story problem today says, states, let's say you charge $678.32 on an outdoor gear for your upcoming camping and fishing trip. You decide to take out a charge card at Cabela's to pay for your gear. If the card has a 27.99% interest rate on it, and you wait four months to make a payment, how much interest have you accumulated? What is your new total to pay off? So let's just focus on our first question. How much interest have you accumulated? And interest is using our formula. I equals P times R times T. So, plugging in our numbers, our interest equals our P or the principal amount we're starting with, $678.32 times our rate in decimal form, so 0.2799 times our T. However, no, four months Can't leave it in months. We have to switch it to years. So, four months over how many months in a year? Twelve months. And if we divide that, we get one third, which is 0.33 repeating. In our formula, I'm going to actually go with 0.33 repeating for our time. Now, if we solve this, we should end up with I equals $63.00 and 22 cents. And that is our interest accumulated. Now, the second question asks us, what is our new total to pay off? Here we're just taking how much money we owed, 
or $678.32, and adding to it the interest that we now owe of $63.22 for a grand total of $741.54. Which is our new payment that we have to make. So, when you do get a credit card, do not let the interest accumulate because now you owe a lot more than you ever spent. Our final story problem today states that to help pay for college, you take out student loans. Totally real life. One loan is for $3,500 with an 8.4% interest rate and you make your first payment four years after taking it out. Your second loan is for $4,500 with a 6.2% interest rate, and you make your first payment three years after taking it out. How much interest did you accumulate in total? So let's first look at the first loan for $3,500, and we're trying to find interest which we know how to do, interest formula. I equals P times R times T. Interest on our first loan is the investment amount, 3,500, times our rate, 0 0.084, times the time, four years. That ends up with I equaling 1,100, and $76. Our second loan follows the same process. We need to know the interest on it. So I equals P times R times T will equal P is $4,500. It's rate 0 0.062 and how many years it's at? Three years. The interest accumulated on our second loan is $837. Now, we want to find how much interest did we accumulate in total. So, total, we're going to add them up. Interest on our first loan of $1,176 plus interest on the second loan of $837 gives us a grand total of $2,000 and $13 in interest. And that is why when you take out a loan, you want to pay it back as quickly as possible so that you will have the least amount of extra money or interest to pay off on it.